When people think of investing, they tend to think about the stock market or real estate or index funds or gold, Bitcoin, etc. All of those things are part of investing. But it kind of misses the forest for the trees. Investing is so much more than opening up a Robinhood account and dropping in a few dollars buying into an index fund and waiting for it to grow. In this video, I'm going to talk about the three types of investing so that beginners can learn the fundamentals and get started right away. But before I do that, what's up you guys? You're watching Finance Squared. I'm your illustrious host, Derek West. And on this channel, we love talking about everything finance related. And investing is a key piece of finance. Always has been, always will be. But like I mentioned, investing is not just about getting a Robinhood account or a Charles Schwab account or even starting off with money. This is particularly true if you're just starting out in the investment world and have little to no funds to really make an impact in the stock market, in real estate, in anything really. The truth is you need to begin your investment journey by understanding that there are really different types of investments. In my opinion, three different types of investments. And we're going to talk about them in this video. The three types of investing are investing your time, investing your talent, and investing your treasure. The three T's, if you will. I was actually going to call this video the three T's of investing, but the YouTube algorithm would not have favored that particular phrasing as, as well, in my personal opinion. So I didn't go with that title. Speaking of triggering the YouTube algorithm, be sure to gently caress that like button so YouTube sends this video to more and more viewers, validating your good tastes in video viewing. But back to the 3Ds of investing. Time, talent, and treasure. Each of those types of investments is important, and they reinforce each of the other ones. Let's start off with time, since it'll be the easiest to do for beginners. So investing your time is the first T of the three T's for investing. Why is it first? Well, because most investors have little money when they first start out, but they do have a ton of time. A lot of people don't realize just how valuable time is as a matter of fact, particularly if you're younger. It's sort of the nature of humanity, if you think about it. When you're younger, you just have a shorter perception of the passage of time in general. Even short spans of time like hours and days can feel like an eternity, particularly when you're doing something that you don't perceive as fun, like studying for a test or learning the fundamentals of investing or studying in general. You'd rush matter, <laughs> you'd rush matter. You would much rather spend your time and pay close attention to the way that is phrased, spend your time on other pursuits that offer short-term pleasure, perhaps at the expense of your long-term happiness. You know, things like partying all night, spending too much time playing video games or other distractions, watching Netflix, things like that. There, of course, are even more other negative ways to spend your time that really turn your life into a negative direction. I'm sure you're all aware of them, things like drugs, hanging around with bad people who have bad influences, etc. The point is, everything you do in life takes up the limited time you have on this earth. And if you spend most of your time doing things that have a net neutral impact on your finances, or even worse, have a negative impact on your finances, you'll see that reflected later on in your life. And you'll see that later on in life, when you finally realize that time is a very precious commodity that you're quickly running out of. That's one of the reasons why many people insist on educating yourself at all times in your life, particularly when you're younger. Education is a great investment of your time, no matter what age you are or what your highest official education level is. If you don't have a high school degree, or if you're a PhD in some subject, more education is always better than less. In fact, education is probably the number one investment that anyone can make in themselves, including stock markets, real estate, anything. Education is key for future success in finances and anything else. Educating yourself can enrich yourself, not just monetarily, and it certainly can, but also culturally and spiritually as well allowing you to live your most fulfilled life and really leave an impact on those around you. Now, it doesn't have to be formal. It can be simply reading white papers, online articles, blog posts, even just living life and experiencing things and failing fast, things like that. But it could be a bit more formal. It can include things like taking online classes from sources like Udemy, Skillshare, and many other online sites. Of course, it can take the form of reading books on topics that interest you, and even going to school or going back to school to get the credentials that you'll need to be entrusted in high demand positions. So remember, education is the most important way to invest your time. Which leads us to the talent side of investing. Investing in your talent is very similar to investing in your education. Both can be done when you're relatively new to the investing world and relatively young, and both should be kept up no matter what your age or skill level is in any endeavor. Investing in your talent is investing in actual tangible skills that you now have acquired through educating yourself. One of the reasons why it comes second is because you need to know what skills to acquire to keep investing in. This means actually contributing your skills in any way that you can, typically for a paycheck, but it doesn't have to be. It could be you just volunteering your skills for a cause you believe in, or for an internship, working for free for a period of time. Just getting those skills on your resume and proof that you know what you're doing and then getting paid a good amount for it. A lot of people fear working for free, and there's good reason for that. 
Nobody wants to do work for free. You should get paid for the skills that you provide and the service that you provide. But remember, you're investing in your talent when you're utilizing it for free. Sure, everyone would like to get paid top dollars for their skills, and you should get paid top dollars for your skills. But to get that top dollar, oftentimes, you need to show that you know what you're doing and you really have the repetitions under your belt that will build your confidence in that skill. But investing in your talent can be even more than that as well. It can be about exercising skills to grow your own business and your own side hustle. For example, ride sharing for Uber or Lyft, creating and operating a Shopify or Amazon FBA store, getting involved in a franchise like a Starbucks or Panera Bread or something like that. Once you have those skills sharpened and you're earning money from the time and talents that you've invested, then it's time to start thinking about investing in your treasure. Investing your treasure is literally putting actual money into investment vehicles that you think can and will make you money. This is the sort of investing that you hear about the most when you're looking at CNBC or watching your favorite YouTubers or TikTok influencers wax philosophical on the subject. This includes investing in the stock market, which is a whole separate video in and of itself. Actually, it's a series of videos in and of itself. So like and subscribe and click that notification bell because I'm working on it as you're watching this. So be ready when it drops. But you've likely heard of investment vehicles like stocks and bonds. Both are staples of investing your talent. Investing in stocks represents owning a tiny piece of a company. Depending on the type of stock you invest in, that piece of a company may pay you a tiny amount from its profits as well. Or you could simply just own a piece of it, and as it grows in value, your wealth grows as well. Owning a bond is literally like becoming a bank. Have you ever been making a mortgage payment or been paying off a high interest credit card bill or your student loans? And you thought to yourself, how do I get on the other side of this equation where someone is paying me interest on a loan? Well, that's essentially what a bond is. You in essence become a bank, loaning your money out to others in exchange for an interest rate. There's more to it than that, obviously, so be sure to like and subscribe for more videos in the very near future on both stocks and bonds. But investing in the stock market can include investing in index funds, which act as baskets of stocks and bonds and even other instruments, instantaneously giving you a very diversified portfolio simply by putting your money into them. There's also exchange-traded funds, commonly called ETFs in the finance world, which are like index funds, except that they can be traded just like stocks in the middle of the trading day. There are other differences, of course, and of course, I'll be making a video on this in the very near future, but both index funds and ETFs and their progenitor, the mutual funds, have their pros and they have their cons. Like I said, I'll get to that in a future video, but they are all great tools for investing your treasure. And then there are exotic instruments. If you're looking to really accelerate your growth and you have an appetite for more risk, there are really exotic instruments that you can utilize that can help you to do this. Starting off with derivatives. You have no doubt heard of derivatives, but they had been blamed for the 2008 financial crisis and the Great Recession that followed. Credit default swaps, to be precise, or mortgages that were sliced up and sold to investors were at the root cause of many of the financial service failures that caused the Great Recession and the bailouts and recession that followed. But other types of derivatives can and have been used to great success by finance gurus the world over to accelerate their wealth generation. Do be wary though. Sometimes it's just better to slowly build your wealth one step at a time than to take huge risks with your money. But to be clear, it's all about your risk tolerances and your investment horizon, as well as your ability to understand the investments you're taking. But there is Forex. Forex, or Foreign Currency Exchange, is, in my mind, an exotic investment instrument. Not that exotic, actually. In reality, it's taking advantage of the difference in the values of currencies across the globe. Speaking of currencies, we have cryptocurrency, which is a speculative investment in the idea that inflation will be rampant across the world. And it's better to hedge your bet on a currency that is not controlled by a government. There is obviously more to it. And I have a big series coming up on cryptocurrency in the very near future. So stay tuned. REITs. REITs would be real estate investment trusts, which are basically real estate investments that can be purchased relatively cheaply without having the big upfront cost, like a huge down payment, like, like a 20% down payment on a house or on an investment property, for example. And those kind of costs can add up. Imagine if you wanted to purchase a apartment complex. Apartment complexes tend to range in the tens of millions of dollar category. Most people don't have 20% of $10 million just lying around. However, you can invest in an apartment complex by buying a REIT that holds apartment complexes and slowly but surely build up your wealth through them. But investing doesn't have to be all about the stock market or risky investment instruments. There is the tried and true investment of real estate that I just talked about. Quite a few famous YouTubers started out as real estate investors. Guys like Graham Stephan, Grant Cardone, Meet Kevin. I'm sure Kevin is his name somehow, but Meet Kevin is his YouTube channel name. Uh, I watch him from time to time. He's a good guy. Ryan Serhant and many others. All of them just started out by getting into real estate investments, getting good at real estate, and talking about their experiences and how you can do it as well. Investing in real estate is probably the favorite investment vehicle 
for those who do not trust the stock market as a way to generate wealth. But it isn't the only way. You can invest in other enterprises as well. In today's day and age, a popular type of enterprise to invest in is a Shopify store. You can literally just buy Shopify stores that have set customer and inventory and everything has been set up for you. And the only thing that you have to do is keep the train running. Now they can get expensive, but they are out there to do. And it is possible to actually do this. You can also invest in franchises and not necessarily run them. In other words, you just give people the money to run those enterprises and they do all of the work of getting the franchise up and going and you just collect your portion of the profits. But let's not forget about buying off assets and failed businesses and reselling them or using them in another business venture. For example, you could buy the inventory of a business that's going out of sale and then turn around and sell that inventory on your own store or on Amazon or eBay or Etsy for a tidy profit. That's basically an advanced adaptation of Gary Vee's strategy of going to garage sales, finding and buying stuff and turning around and then selling it. But what next? What other types of investments are out there? Well, I have several videos going into depth on all the topics that I just touched the surface of here. In fact, take a look at the playlist on the screen right now for just a taste of that. And in the meantime, I'm going to be working on about videos on the specifics of those various types of investment instruments that I just talked about. So be sure to hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're aware when the next video drops. And do not forget to leave a comment on which type of investment is your favorite type. And keep in mind, a goal without a plan is a wish. And a goal with a plan and no action is a wish list. Take action on your goals if you're going to realize your dreams. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.